welkom back to the arts of F.A. Jackie. <laughs> no pirate outfit today, but the stupid accent. I'm not quite sure what to pit that accent at, but maybe Eastern European because I'm half Hungarian. But anyway, uh, welcome again to the art of F.A. Jackie. I have not done a, an episode for a while because it's summer vacation, we're busy with kids, and we just got back from the East Coast, went to uh, Philadelphia, we went to Boston, we went to uh, Wildwood, New Jersey, had a good time with the family. And so I want to just come back and uh, get back to uh, what I was working on last. It's not in the series of the fantasy and surreal. It's actually a series for a sweet young lady um, that I met on Facebook. And unfortunately, uh, let's say that again. Unfortunately, <laughs> um, in all seriousness, she lost her dog. A, a very, very cute little uh, Dotson that I just sketched here on the canvas. I'm going to lay a little bit of tape for just some... Uh, uh, just some flavor to it, but there's a sketch here. I'm going to show you a minute of the Datsun, and we're going to add a little design to it just to kind of um, add to it, because otherwise it's just going to be a flat, like, kind of uh, background. We want to do something with some some tape lines or whatnot. But anyways, um, thank you again for all your uh, recent subscriptions. I still need all your help in getting the word out about this show. Please subscribe. Please like, please comment, please share. Give us feedback. Tell us what you want to see. Uh, we recently just finished this piece in the last uh, episode um, or so. And then that poodle piece, which kind of was a fail. Oh, well. Uh, it was a bad picture. There's no worries. But this picture, I love I love the balance on this picture just because of how the dog is positioned. And, and, I'll, and I'll post one up on here later. So we're going to start off. Um, with a little bit of acrylics uh, just to kind of outline it. And then we're going to start, I just think we're going to go straight into the oils and paint it. But we'll just do a, a, a flat acrylic background and then we can just gloss it all over in the end. We got, we got some, uh, uh, I believe I have some gloss in here somewhere that we could put over it. But anyways, thank you again um, for watching. Uh, I'll keep repeating this uh, mantra every uh, episode, 50%, once we get to monetization, 50% is going to charities, the arts, uh, for the dog causes. We said when we, uh, whenever we do an animal like elephants, we'll donate to elephants. Dogs, we'll give it to uh, rescues and, and uh, uh, foster uh, type charities or things for the, uh, you know, like humane society and so on, charitable causes. So I'm, I'm not going to keep all the revenue from this. This is, a, I think, a cool business model for fa or for uh, YouTube that I've talked about on Facebook a little bit um, on my on my page, but I talk about it all the time in these episodes that, you know, if we can give back, I think it makes it an all, uh, you know, win for everybody. It's a win for everyone. And uh, I really uh, passionately and sincerely feel that way. So we're going to go light the Bob Ross candle here in a second. And let's get started. All right, hopefully you can see me okay. You know our little ritual here as we've uh, done in the past. You know the inspiration as a kid, Bob Ross, and I light the candle before I paint. Sort of like a ritual to get into my art um, mojo, so to speak but also to honor a figure that I don't want to be a painter just like him, but I want to paint, I want to create. And so we light the candle in his honor and we'll do that here before we get started. About a 20 minute episode, folks, and uh, we're gonna to try to keep it to that, focusing on the, getting into the detailed portion of this later after we do the, you know, this is just gonna be matted with the background. We're gonna get right into painting the dog. Um, I'll show you a little close up here in a second. But uh, the point is uh, that this episode is more to show how we do sort of like a, a still life, but not really still life, it's a portraiture of a dog, okay? They don't, they aren't still, I'm sorry, that's this anthropomorphizes this thing. Uh, it, uh, this is a living thing, so it's gonna be cool, it's gonna be fun. Learn how to paint your dog, all right. And, okay, so here's the sketch of the dog, cute dots in there off of a picture that the uh, uh, gal I was telling you about on Facebook sent to me. It, it is a little bit off the center, and that's just the way I ended up drawing it. And uh, it's okay because I, I kind of want some foreground on this one here, push it a little bit to the back, give it maybe a little bit less um, 
I don't know, in your face type of uh, foreground. I want it more mid to background for this dog and uh, much like the picture that I had. And so I'm gonna go ahead and put this background. We're gonna, I'm gonna get a little bit of masking tape. I'm gonna boost through some lines in here, add a little flavor, okay? And um, I'll pick a nice color for the background. Then we'll get started. All right, you can kind of get a good look at the layout here and I'm gonna pull off some of this tape. Part of the fun part here. Oh boy, doesn't that feel fun? We all like doing that, I think, with, with our paintings and other thing. Pull the tape down here. Get these up here. Get that one up here. And you can kind of get a good look right here. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So I'm pretty pleased. Got a little bit too much light here. Pretty pleased with uh, the layout I have here. Just trying to give it more of a carpetish feel or something. I'm not sure how well you can see the sketch of the dog. We're gonna start working on that, but I do like how the flooring aspect of this came out better than I think it was before um, with these lines on it. When I say before, uh, having touched it up some with these lines and I was right, doing that I think added something to this in terms of the composition. And that's something to keep in mind where you position your subject, subject being the dog, and uh, we'll start working on the dog. Okay, so here I'm starting to lay out some of the dog, uh, bringing in a little bit of this Venetian red. Um, I got some orangish color in here too. Um, we're just gonna kind of lay out the basic uh, colors of the dog, more or less. Uh, use black where needed, adjust, and uh, you know, try to match the colors as we go now with with oils of course you can do a lot more blending and, and the oil, woo, the kids are going off today and uh you can see there's certain point yeah the kids are going off like crazy all right so we're matching some colors in here and just outlining as we go Man, kids, <laughs> they can be a lot, especially uh, when you're in creative mode. They can really, really push your buttons. Uh, you know, there's a certain level of concentration with this. I have to be honest. It's. I wish I could just paint with chaos completely, um, but it's very hard to do. Very hard. Uh, in an adult audience, it'd be easier because adults don't scream at you or I think have major fights around you. Funny enough. There, that's, you can you hear that? <laughs> oh, boy. The life of a parent. And uh, they're fighting over some, like, silly buddy or something. What's up, baby? So then maybe you guys just need to separate from each other. Have you thought but about he's that? Downstairs. Huh? But he's downstairs. He's downstairs? Okay. Well, why don't you stay upstairs in your room like you were? You were being so good. And if you guys want to do your sleepovers at your friends, you better be good. Hold that over their head. But I still can take it away. I can still take away the fun that they're looking for these sleepovers with their friends tonight. Yep. Um, so you can see uh, in some spots where you have to darken, maybe go into a little black if you need to darken the browns. Um, again, just, just try to color match by the uh, palette you see in, in your mind and then, and then just find the right paints. Uh, the pictures give you the, all the indication you need. Um, the photos uh, give you all the direction, I think, um, my opinion. Not always easy to do, uh, especially with uh, like stiller life, where you just want to get the closest approximation 
to it. Um, and then you just keep blending it. And, and this is probably, I, I know I'm off right here. Uh, I can tell I'm off, but I want to get this darker in here just to make the line and then lighten it as I go. So I'm making lines and shape and form as being deposited into the canvas, okay? And in, in keeping with my drawing, of course. Um, and that's okay because we can always make our adjustments as we go and just work our way around um, the contours of the uh, sketch, okay? And oils, the beauty of oil, I can't do this with acrylics. I cannot get uh, this level of control, I think, in blending it and flow that uh, I think this allows me. But anyhow, be careful to stop as you go on, on these ones and check your work as you go because you might miss a contour that matters. Little detail, I mean, I think for dog owners, it's probably gonna be a little bit more um, attuned. They know exactly how their dog looked. They saw their dog every day. Um, you know, this like their child kinda, you know, and they wanna see it as close to, uh, as to the, cause you can paint a dog. It's easy to paint a dog, any dog, um, in terms of imaginary, anthropomorphic sense of a dog. What does the dog look like with the ears and the, and the nose and the mouth, you know, the basic uh, shape of a dog, right? So, of course, you know, that's uh, the... the uh, shape and form of a dog. But this is the dog that, it, this is the dog that actually lived this is the actual dog and uh you know you, you want to try to keep with the actual real life of that that dog and how it looked so to be uh fair to its shape and form in real life okay so when i say shape and form what is it what does that mean well there's not standard shapes in dogs but there's an outline of a dog right uh, some things are rounder, some things are straighter, some things, who knows? I mean, it, it, it's all lines and, and, and not necessarily straight lines or squiggly lines or whatever the case may be. Uh, the point I'm trying to make, if there is one at all here, because I'm trying to concentrate and talk and, and uh, <laughs> think of what I'm doing, uh, there is a point to it. Uh, you're paying attention to the basic forms that are all laid out for you in a photo, okay? Uh, getting back to that. So this is something I'm working with real life view, okay? And the beauty of this animal as it was in, in real life, okay? Um, so... I'm trying my best to stick with that, right? And we use colors to differentiate the light and the tones and the various uh, aspects of this dog. Fur, fur and bone structure and whatnot. We're still shadowing. Oops, lost my picture there for a second. Um, And so we, we've put in some lighter colors and, and, and we experiment a little bit on the canvas because you can always go back and, and alter it as you need to, right? And so that's my word of the day, experimentation, which is, I think, easily uh, misunderstood um, as in terms of being an, an experimental painter so much. Um, I'm talking more about the experimentation of paint and an important concept, I think, um, in, in the world of uh, oil painting and uh, artistry, craft, and uh, design, 
the functionality of, of all this in terms of how paint works. It either works for you or it works close to what it should um, if you're doing it right, okay? And it works for you when you are taking your time more and learning the craft. Um, and what do I mean by that, learning the craft? Well, the craft is one where it's just like anything else. I play baseball. How do you get good at baseball? Um, you don't get good at baseball because you went out to your, your backyard one day and you, you hit a few balls um, with your buddies. You played with your buddies a long time and maybe started on a team. Then it gets more serious, right? It gets, it gets much more um, involved and competitive, right? And you can see where I kind of need a touch up here and there. So I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm getting some basic colors and shades and, and contours with the muscles of the dog, all right? Uh, especially where I feel like it needs to be darker or it needs to be lighter, okay? We'll fix it as we go. There's lots of different techniques in terms of blending hair and fur, different brushes you can use, of course. But the main thing to keep in mind is, are you staying true to your art? Because maybe you have a certain style. And are you staying true to what the commission is? You know, if they said, I want a psychedelic rainbow version of my dog. I might, <laughs> that would be something else. I'd have to probably change the way I do things for a bit um, and figure it out, okay? Um, so again, you know, staying with the uh, contours and the lighting and everything else that this photo actually gives me a lot of cheating because I don't have to imagine it and lay it out in my head and use studies to say, well, how should it theoretically look, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so with that, um, we're getting close to our 20 minute mark and um, I'm gonna stop the tape here and we'll time lapse through the rest of this, folks. Well, I don't know if I got it just right, but not too bad. <laughs> uh, that's the end of the time. Lapse. I got a lot of touch up to do on this one here. I'll put up the picture of the dog I'm painting here after. I wanted to paint it first and then show you what I'm painting. But some touch up left to do, but that's the basic idea right there. Hope you like it. And after some touch ups, this is pretty much the final piece right here. I think it came out pretty good. OMG. <laughs> I'm kind of actually beat on that because uh, I just went straight painting and um, this is not something I'm used to doing. I, I don't do a lot of portraiture yet, but I'd like to and that's why I'm doing it. Um, a dog still portraiture is just a different animal like us. Um, you know, we're animals too with hairless ones. <laughs> well, not hairless, but mostly hairless. <laughs> we have um, b basic techniques, um, you know, just using different brushes. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll hold some up. A lot of that was acrylic in the background. Almost all of it was acrylic in the background. But essentially use some little brushes like this for a lot of the details. A little bit chiseled, a little bit um, round. Um, and then... Uh, Two other chisel brushes and then a, another, uh, I guess, a small filbert or, or like a filbert, a line brush. Uh, but that one's, as you can see, more chiseled right in there. 
And you didn't get to see these very easily, but they're little rounds as well. And they get some progressively smaller line brushes. So the, this little tiny one here look, worked great for the eyes. <laughs> okay. Oh, boy. Well, thanks for... Whoa. Camera. Thanks for watching uh, The Art of F.A. Checky. Uh, this has been a ton of fun. I hope the... Uh, person who was, you know, telling you about uh, my friend on Facebook. I hope she likes it when it's all said and done. I, like I said, I, I do have some detail work to do, but uh, in looking at, I think the composition is mostly down. Um, it's got a little bit on the vertical hold on there. It's a little bit uh, wider, I think, in the actual picture. It looks a little thicker, but I think the basic shape of the dog is, is in line. And uh, like I said, I hope she likes it. Still got to detail it out, but I'm going to let the oil sit for a bit. Uh, when you're doing detailed work, when you want to blend, leave it wet. When you want to do detail, you need to go over the drier paint, let it sit for a bit so it doesn't just blend in. Those, those white highlights are very hard to do on a wet brown surface or black surface because it just starts to become a lighter version of what was there before or barely, you can barely see it. So uh, once again, uh, subscribe. <laughs> subscribe uh, like share comment let me know what you think give me some feedback i'd love to hear what you have to uh, say about my work or something you want to see next episode we'll get back into the fantasy surreal um, series i've been in uh, for for this year uh, but i want to thank you all uh, for watching remember 50 percent goes to charity so your support helps other people too and hopefully we get to that point where we're able to fully monetize and and make some revenue to be able to help other people. Uh, I can't wait to see you till next time. Be the artist you were born to be. Be the person you were born to be, which means follow your fate, follow your destiny. I think being an artist was, at least for me, um, part of my destiny, not my entire destiny, but a big part of it. And so I want to encourage everybody to do the same. Um, especially uh, because I have a passion for the arts and what I do, if I can inspire some people to do the same, it makes me very happy. So take care, everybody. Have a great one. I'll see you next time.